I guess. Welcome to Inside the Box. In this video, I'm going to explain you the basics of creating your own boxes. After you finish the tutorial on Inside the Box, which is 8 levels, you'll be granted permission to create your own boxes. I'm going to try and walk you through some of the basics and show you some handy tips and information that you can use to help you to build boxes easier and understand how everything works. Walk out to the lobby and go to the create section. In this building you'll find the tools that you need to create and manage your own boxes as well as the library which is in the bottom section which explains how all the various blocks and mechanics of box creation works. So let's head in there. Inside the create section you'll find portals in the middle section and on the upper floors that will help you manage your boxes. We'll first head down into the library using these stairs on the left and right. We're in the bottom of the library. In front of us, you see various terminals standing next to blocks and some item frames in the middle. And each of these terminals explains how the block in front of it actually works. So this terminal over here has a help description how the button works. This one, the switch. Over here is the terminal that describes how the various tools that the player can obtain and use in boxes and what you can do with them. This terminal describes the tools that are specifically made for building in your own boxes. This terminal describes the removal tool, which is very important because some nodes are extremely difficult to remove, like metal doors. This terminal describes the connector tool that you need to use to connect switches to doors, etc. This tool, it's called the door tool, will help you to set the entry and exit doors into your boxes. If you're wondering how these terminals work and you haven't figured it out yet, all you need to do is right click on these terminals. You can type help and it will show you what commands are available. If you type help and then the name of a command, it will show you some information about what the command does. If you type list, it will show you that there is a file here called terminal. If you type read terminal, you'll get a description of the terminal. Essentially, these terminals are made so that you can leave text files or documentation for other players And you can use this to put much larger pieces of text in a place, make notes for yourself, and uh, write hints to the players if you want to. Although I don't really recommend it. If you do use hints, use riddles or some sort of story to give it a little bit more atmosphere. In the back side is a few demonstration tables that will show you how various pieces work. In order to fully understand them, you should really read the text that are on these terminals, because the way that they work is explained extensively in there. Of course, we've all figured out that the button makes things go on and off, and the switch makes things go on or off, and you can keep them that way. Go ahead and play with all these tables. There's a bunch more, and we'll add more as more nodes will get explanations see what they do. Here's a node that makes a signal go delay, and here's a node that will extend the length of a signal. Take your time, and please read all the descriptions. In the center of the building, you will find these green portals. These green portals allow you to create new boxes, edit your boxes, play your own boxes, and submit your boxes for review. To use them, simply step on them and you'll get a creator interface that is essentially a nice form that has all the buttons, lists all your boxes and you can edit. So let's take a look at them. There's one behind me, so I'm going to step on this one. Okay. When I'm first starting out, I will obviously have not made any boxes before, so I'll be able to create a new box. 
I click Create New, and it will ask me for a size. 25 and 25 and 30 are reasonable sizes to start with. 35 is a very large box already, and 40 is definitely too large, especially for a first box. I'd recommend that you start with a box that is 25 or 20 large. 20 could get a little bit small, so 25 is a really good size to start out with. When you hit Create, a completely new and empty box is made for you with the size that you specified. You are transported into this box, a number is put on the wall that corresponds with the number of your box, and you can now edit. That means that the hem that you're now given will have a yellow band on it, and it'll allow you to go and place blocks, but also dig most of them. The box walls, floors, and ceiling are all unbreakable for obvious reasons. We don't want you to build outside of your box. You will have gotten a bunch of items in your inventory to help you out getting started with your box. We'll go over them one by one. More importantly, you have your e game tab now, a couple of extra buttons and fields that you can use. Obviously, you want to regularly save your box. If you want to leave your box, this will automatically save your box as well. You click the Stop Editing Your Box button. You can set a name, you can change the skybox of your box. We'll go into details and sh show all of them to you how it looks. Okay, back to notes. You've gotten a block of marble and a block of iron. We just give them to you so you have something to play around with when you first start. You're obviously welcome to use any of the other blocks that are in the 21 pages here available to you, but it may just be helpful to go and use the simple blocks to build up some structure and put some elements in place. You've gotten the Remove tool, which very importantly will help you remove some of the mechanical items which are a little bit difficult to remove. For instance, digging a button would actually push it before you would be able to go and dig it. So the Remove tool is very handy to remove me mechanical elements which are already wired up. Okay, how does the player get into your box? Let's go over the Door tool. As the tooltip says, this tool places or removes entry and exit doors. The entry door must be on the west wall and the exit door must be on the east wall. Now, it's really easy to remember which ones that are. If you look at the number that is put on your box, the entry box will be on your right and the exit box will be on your left. You don't have to put them at the bottom. You can put them anywhere you want. And if you place them again, they will simply be moved for you. Okay. Now the player can come into the box and leave. However, as you've played, you notice that you will need to go and put a nexus block onto a pedestal. So at a minimum, you need to have one pedestal. You can have two or as many as you want, but it must be at least one. If you put zero into your box, your box will is, it'll be unplayable. And for every pedestal that you have, you must at least have the nexus block available. So at a minimum, if I put two pedestal blocks down, I need to have two nexus chests. If I decide to remove one, I can keep an extra, pedestal, an extra nexus chest over here. Extra is okay, but if I remove one and have too few, the box is not playable because the player can never finish it. So you have to make sure that you put enough nexus chests down to cover it. I would recommend not putting more nexus chests down than pedestals and keep them the same amount. Otherwise it could get very confusing for the player, but it is still possible. The only thing that matters is that you have enough nexus chests to cover the pedestals. In this shape you have a completely playable box. So let's go give it a try and look at the rest of the editor interface. First, I'm going to go and stop editing the box, which will also save the box. We head back to the create section, and we step on the plate, and there you go, there's my new box. As you can see, now I can actually submit my box. I can play my box, and I can continue editing. Let's go and play it for a section. As you can see while I'm playing, I am put into a lobby that has an exit back to the lobby in case the player wants to return. 
It'll show you the title, and I haven't put a title in there. It'll show you a name and it shows how long the player has been working on building this thing. The door is nicely closed behind me. Yes, you're not hearing the music because I actually disabled it for this making of this video. Got my Nexus chest in. The exit door is nicely open. And we finished the box. Of course, with 12 seconds, it wasn't very complex. All right, let's return and go back to the create section. Okay. If we want to edit the box again, we simply click edit and we find ourselves back into the box as we left off when we were last editing it. The submit button allows me to tell the admins of the server that the box is finished and ready for testing. When you do this, the box becomes not editable. You can no longer edit your box after you submit it. We want to make sure that people don't accidentally ruin the experience of other players or destroy something which actually had some value for other players. If you really must edit your box after you submitted it, you can retract it, but this can only be done before the box is accepted. Once your box is accepted, only in very rare cases will we allow you to edit your box. Most of the times, if you really think that your box must be edited, you should ask for an admin to go and make sure that the changes that you need to think that need to be done are done by an admin and will be more than happy to go and make those changes for you. This is just to prevent people from going back into their boxes and deleting or wiping everything or doing something that may um, be negative uh, experience for other players. When you do retract, you'll be able to go back and edit your box again. Let's go over the concepts of building. There are many, many different nodes in the inventory. As you can see, 21 pages. Quite a lot of nodes. And you will see that there's many nodes of which there are two versions. I've dropped two in my inventory dirt and dirt can be dig with a shovel by the player okay why are there two different versions well we obviously have got the regular dirt which I can dig while I'm editing here and then we have dirt can be dug by a player and when I place that nothing happens except this icon shows up and I right click it an icon appears when I'm holding it if I take the icon out, of, if I take the block out of my hand, it won't be showing it. This is the placeholder. The placeholder means that if the player obtains a block of dirt that is diggable by the player, then it can be placed over here. But the player should not be able to get normal dirt nodes, which are these over here, to look exactly the same. And the player could never place them here as well. Okay, so now in this spot I've got a placeholder and the player will be able to place a piece of dirt here. Now you're saying how could a player obtain a piece of dirt? Well, the answer is if you press shift while right clicking it, it will actually place this diggable piece of dirt on the ground. So now I have a diggable piece of dirt and the places where the player can put that. So all we need now to do is to give a shovel to the player. We do that in the form of the test with the tool. Just with tool shovel. Place it somewhere in the level. And now we have a shovel that the player can obtain, take these notes, and then place them under the placeholders that are over here. Okay. Another way for the player to obtain a shovel is with a frame that is unlocked. Put the frame on the wall. We can put most of the nodes in here. I can put, for instance, the diggable dirt node in here. If I shift click the node, then in the chat you'll see that it says item frame is now locked. That means that the player won't be able to get it. Let me just take this node out, put a shovel in, which is under tools, shovel, place it in here and leave it unlocked. Ok, 
Okay, now let's quickly go and play this. So we can check and see if it all works. We save the box. And we go to the edit section, the create section, and go and play it. Okay, when I hit play, we'll end up in our box. And as you can see by my hand, I don't have the yellow band on it, so you, so you can see that I'm actually playing. And there we have our little demo section that we just built. Let's open the chest. Great. I got myself a shovel, and indeed I can build this. Take this. Can I take these? No. When you're building boxes, try not to use both of the pickable and the undickable nodes at the same time, because it's very confusing to players. And, yes, I can play them. Let's get the shovel out. Great, I've got two shovels. And of course this works as well. The player can actually put the shovel back in here. But you can't put the shovel back into the chest. Not that it matters much, because when the player leaves the box, they lose their items anyway. Let's talk a little bit about the triggers and the mechanical notes. We've put a bunch of these notes down that are very well representative. I will show you how the mechanical system works and how you need to go and rig this all up. As you may have found out by playing the tutorial, is that there are no wires in the system that drives the buttons, the switches, the doors, and a whole bunch of other notes. We have two categories of these mechanical notes. We call them mech notes. Some of them create trigger signals, like the pressure plate, the switch, the button, and I've just put them down here for convenience so we can look at all of them for a second. Some of them accept triggers. So basically we've got outputs and we've got inputs. Now there are a few nodes that are both an output and a trigger, but we'll leave them alone here for a second. We're just going to talk about how those connections are made and how it can be that without wires we can rig this all up. To do this we need the connector tool. The connector tool can be found in the tools tab. I grab one out. I should actually grab a few out so you can see how it works. Okay, so now I have three connector tools. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rig all of this up so that everything is connected to everything and explain to you how it works. First, let's start with the switch. Now, the switch, when you punch it, it will switch from off to on and from on to off. That means that when I switch it on, a trigger will be generated to whatever node is connected to it. And when I switch it to off, an untrigger signal, I don't know if that's proper English, but that's what we called it, an untrigger signal will be sent to all of the connected nodes. That doesn't mean that the connected nodes will do anything with it, except that that's the mechanic of the way that it works, and it works very well, so we just kept, kept the terminology. So I've got a trigger and an untrigger. Okay, so let's connect the switch to the piston, and I left click it. Now the connector tool has a tooltip that says left click to connect the switch at this position. By the way, this position is relative to your box, so when you edit it the next time it might actually be different, but at least you'll be able to somewhat find it back later on. So left click means that if I left click a different node, I will connect switch to something else. The first thing you click is the thing that generates the signal, the source, and we're going to go and connect it to the piston so that will be the target. Okay, if I enable my chat you'll see that it says connection started with Mac switch, connecting completed with Mac piston base sticky. I have now a completed connection between this switch and this piston. So if I turn it on, it should go up. If I turn it off, it should go down. Now, the connection system is entirely arbitrary. We can connect the switch to many other things. So I'm going to connect the switch to the trapdoor over here and test it. Okay, that works fine. Let's connect the button to the piston. Same thing, left click, left click, left click, left click. You see in the chat, if you can read it, I know it's all white on white, that I've made two entire connections. Now I can punch the button, and the piston moves up and down, and the door goes up and down. What happened here is that the button automatically sends both a trigger signal 
and after one second an untrigger signal, so everything will flip back immediately. Okay, let's do the pressure plate. Punch. Left click. Left click. Left click. And as you can see, if I stand on top of it, things go up. And if I step off of it, it goes down. If I stand on top of it, and then push this button, nothing will happen at first, but then everything will close. If I now step off, nothing will happen. As you can see, I can hook up everything to as much as many of the other nodes around you as you can. There is a, a limit of 30 or so connections that you can have per node, but it's usually enough. If you need to connect more nodes together, you can bridge them together later on and make a chain of nodes to go and get to more nodes. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've all, only ever left clear. If you want to make a lot of connections, you can do this too. I'm just quickly going to remove this pressure plate to wipe all the connections, put a new one in, and show you how to use slightly less, less clicks to solo. If I left click, I start a connection or I finish a connection. But if I right click a connection, it immediately makes a connection to the last thing that I left clicked. And I can do that again. And as you can see, if I had many more nodes lying around, I could keep making connection to new nodes and it would all be hooked up to the pressure plate. The last one that I do, I should left click to finish it. Because if I click a new node again, I will no longer be making a connection from the pressure plate, but now it's made from the button. And this will work. To show you what you can do with many nodes connected to one, you can put down regular nodes. Any node that isn't a mech node that gets connected to an in to a source will get removed as if it was dug by an admin and essentially destroyed. So when I step on this pressure plate, all these bricks that I've previously played, and these are by the way just regular bricks, will get destroyed. You can use this mechanism to make things collapse or to change your map drastically. This concludes the uh, introduction to creating boxes on inside the box. In the future I'll add more videos to go over special elements and tricks that you can use in many of the boxes to do some of the fun puzzle elements that you found in the tutorial and some of the other boxes around. And I'll go over the more complex nodes. For now, I hope that you'll try creating a few boxes yourself and realize that it's very hard to actually create some of these boxes. If you do start building boxes, don't be afraid to just build something that actually looks pretty and makes a nice scenery before you start thinking about a puzzle box. It is often much easier to go and build something pretty first, like a beautiful landscape or a nice building or a cave setting. You get the idea. And then later on, introduce the puzzle elements in there. You'll find that it's much easier to have a very nice environment that will inspire you and other players than build with an empty box and start thinking about puzzle elements and then later on have to move everything because you decided to go and change it from a factory building to a church building that just has a different shape and doesn't fit right in your current box. For now, have fun and please come and join us and build beautiful puzzle boxes that everybody can enjoy. Goodbye.